You're watching Q&A. Our next question tonight comes from Uzma Sharif. As the economic turmoil in Europe seems to show no clear signs of abating, discontent with the European Union structure seems to be brewing amongst member states. What broader political ramifications does the panel believe the current debt crisis will have? And are the cracks that are appearing now, um, will they ultimately spell the end of the European Union as we know it? Dan Hannan. Well, ultimately they will, because nothing goes on forever. But there are so many people with a vested interest in keeping the thing going that I'm afraid we're a long way away from that. And that's why the leaders of the EU have responded to this crisis by accelerating all the policies that caused it in the first place. There's a debt crisis, and they've responded with massive, unprecedented levels of debt. Right now, you know, all of us know in our personal lives, if you're maxed out on your credit card, you're struggling with a mortgage, and the answer is not to spend more, it's to spend less. But of course, governments think, that, well, you have to be an economist to, to think that the answer is So, Dan, I'm just going to ask this question, because it, yeah. it's quite a sort of radical idea that you just let countries go under. But is that what you would do? Would you it's, let not, Greece no, it's not letting Greece go under. It's would very important that we get the economy. It's very important that we get the vocab economy, right on The this. Spanish economy. Right. It's not letting Greece go under. What is forcing Greece under is the current policy. They're being crucified with an overvalued exchange rate. You know, their economy contracted by 6% last year. 20% unemployment, they are being sacrificed to keep the euro together. And when we talk about bailing out Greece or sending assistance to Greece, that money is not going to the people of Greece. The money is going to rescue some very wealthy European bankers and bondholders from the consequences of their own errors. But the repayment will come from the Greek taxpayer. So you, I have some uh, sympathy with that aspect of what the people on the streets in Athens are complaining about. The best chance for Greece to get out of this mess is to devalue, decouple, default, to price itself back into the markets, to start exporting its way back to growth. That's not going to solve all its problems, but at least there will then be a route out okay, of it. OK, before we hear, um, we're interested in, obviously, the implications uh, of all of this for the Australian economy. Uh, where is it going to go, in your opinion, given that you think the Europeans and the other bankers who are backing them, maybe the Chinese, are going in the wrong direction? Uh, yes, and for that reason, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, what should happen is an orderly unbundling of the euro. If that had happened three years ago, we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in now. What I suspect is going to happen is that the EU will do precisely the opposite of that. It will respond with additional integration, common taxes, fiscal federalism, taking more and more power to Brussels. I mean, the, you know, we have a crisis caused by the inability of different economies to sustain the same economic policy. Right. So their, their answer to that is to say, let's do it even more. You know, if you hurt yourself jumping out of a third-storey window, let's jump out of a tenth-storey window and see if that works any better. You know, when are they going to understand that the problem is bailing out and borrowing and that the solution is not going to be to do more of that? The solution is to spend less and to allow each country to tailor its own monetary policy to okay, its own Bill needs. OK, Bill Shorten, if, if Dan is right, um, we've got more pain coming down the track from, in Europe and uh, possibly the collapse of the European market as well. Okay, and what are the implications of that for Australia? Well, it, I think it means that we're seeing a fundamental readjustment of the strength of European currencies to Asia. Um, I, again, I'm not a Europe expert per se, and so obviously Daniel will have some views, but what we're seeing is the emergence or the re-emergence of Asia after 400 years of being the economic powerhouse of the world. I think that shift is on, and I don't think it's going to go back to Europe. The challenge for Australia is, one, some of our banks are exposed to... Um, a general, if, if a general liquidity crisis, so that's one challenge. By that I simply mean in plain English, um, if there's less money in the world, then there's greater competition to attract the money to your bank in Australia, which has pressure on, uh, our, on our banks. Uh, the second thing is I think the Australian dollar will stay up for a while, which is great if you're going overseas to Europe to visit, you know, Athens, but it's not so great if you're in tourism, uh, domestic tourism or education services or manufacturing. So the high dollar is an issue. The high dollar is also compounded separately from Europe by our mining boom. That's why our mining tax is on the right track. That is why it is right to share the prosperity of Australia's mining boom uh, with the rest of Australia for reducing the corporate rate of tax. It may be of interest to our Dan that in Australia our net government debt, Commonwealth debt, is going to peak at 8.5%. These are numbers which European jurisdictions simply can't believe. Our unemployment's at 5.1%. I'm not saying there's not pressure. Yeah, no, I pressure. would gladly swap my problems for yours, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. OK. All right. Oh, you're well. done. All right. <laughs> let's, let's hear from, uh, uh, let's hear from Julie Bishop on this, and we'll move on to uh, specifically Australian economic questions. I believe that the European crisis could be with us for some time. A question
question is whether or not Europe goes into recession. It will come to a head in one sense in the next month um, as to whether Greece is able to um, get through the um, restructuring. Uh, it may default. The, the bringing together of the Greek government, uh, the European governments, the European Central Bank, the IMF and the private sector creditors, uh, that might not work. There may well be a default, and the question is, is it going to be orderly or disorderly? Uh, Portugal... And the bigger question is, is there going to be a default in a much bigger country like Italy? Indeed. Portugal, Spain, then what about um, Italy? Can and we ask then, Dan about that while we're will, on the subject? And will there be a backlash from Germany and France? And then how that impacts in Australia, of course, as Bill talked about the high Australian dollar, I think we've got to live with the fact that the yeah. Australian dollar will be high for quite some time. And no party is going to um, not float the dollar. No. We're not going back. So I think we have to live with the high Australian dollar. That's why one of our parties up for it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, right. Right. <laughs> that's why. That's why. So, that's so, why one that's, of that's, our actually, policies, that's a very good point for us to come in with our next question. That's why one you, of our you, policies you is that there to... shouldn't be a carbon tax on the economy at this okay. time. All right. This is Q and A. It's live and interactive. Our next question comes from John Moore. Uh, the um, 